mini conference, and we are very happy to organize this in uh, collaborations with the uh, International Association of Study of Commons, World Commons Week 2019. And I want to thank Charlie for helping us make this possible, and Rafael for hosting this uh, webinar platform that made us uh, made this uh, uh, possible, and all colleagues uh, who have joined us today and who are also presenting today. So thank you all for for coming together and uh, sharing ideas for this uh, for this uh, conference mini conference. So let me try to. So this is part of, uh, uh, so I want to quickly introduce you to the uh, World Commons Week. So this has been happening, uh, it's, it's, this is the second year this has been running. And you know there are more than 50 uh, events happening across the world. So it's amazing how to, to see the growth of this. And it is all about sharing commons practices and scholarships. So colleagues from around the world are uh, joining, uh, you know, there are a lot, lot of local events and webinars as well. So those of you who want to, uh, you know, listen to a lot of very interesting work and presentations are happening. So please feel free to go to the website, uh, which you can see in the screen here. And then you'll be able to uh, look at the various uh, events which are happening as well as some of the webinars which are available for you to join. And Pratif, can I just, this is Charlie, can I just interject yeah, sure. one thing? Yep. Um, so geo for all is really the one, um, uh, open source software community that's represented in this. And I, yes. I, I'm hoping we're building momentum. We had 31 events last year. This yeah. year we have 55. So right. I hope everyone will continue uh, for 2020. Let's, let's yes. uh, continue this. And hopefully it's bringing eyes to um, the good work that everyone in geo for all and OSGEO are doing um, to communities that, that don't know about it yet. So thank yes. you very much. And thanks for yeah, thank you, Charlie. I think that, you know, the, this, uh, even this whole initiative of this, I'm very impressed to see your efforts uh, for this World Commons Week. And I'm sure over time, you know, you'll see more and more, especially I think the times now when I look at, you know, when we look at all the uh, you know, pressing important things on climate change and everything, when you think about this, you know, we find that commons, you know, is becoming very a big, Kind of not only for scholarship, but for you know across the world, people are aware of aware and getting more interested in the whole idea of commons. And so I think, you know, it's really great that Charlie and colleagues have you know brought together colleagues from around the world to share their ideas on this. And we are very grateful from Geo for All to be part of this great initiative. Thank you. So the theme of the this particular geo for all uh, mini conference which are organizing is we thought you know we, uh, you know what you know we to bring together because geo for all as uh, Charlie mentioned you know we are colleagues from around the world working in different areas but I think one of the fundamental themes which all of us uh, work on is is this uh, SDG goals you know so whichever areas so some of us are working in the education some of us are working in research and science you know some colleagues working in different areas, but fundamentally, you know, we all work for, to make sure we benefit humanity and we contribute to the global sustainable development goals. And today, I'm sure, I'm sure you will, from the various different presentations, you will be able to see some of the connections of the work of these different labs and how they are contributing to the particular SDG aims, you know. So, for example, Sergio's work might be relevant to the uh, uh, the work on SDG four uh, education, and there are colleagues, other colleagues who are working in different areas. And um, I myself, my work is uh, more focused on the zero hunger aim. So, but what 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 we are all doing is we are all working on that common aim of how we contribute to the. Uh, goodness of the global humanity and how we contribute to the sustainable development goals. So today, you know, I just want to uh, highlight some of the presentations which will, which will follow. So uh, the geo for all chair, Victoria Rothenbach from the University of Pretoria is going to uh, be the next presenter and she'll be introducing geo for all for those of you who are new to geo for all and giving a broad idea of you know how you can join geo for all you know where you can find all the information this will be followed by uh, sergio agusta lara from uh, uruguay who will be presenting some of the experiences from their uh, the work they have been doing 
uh, for Jeevzik Batovi, one of the excellent uh, initiatives for school education, I would say, you know, I have uh, seen. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to learn more from that. Victor Sunday from the Unique Mappers team uh, are going to show some of the examples uh, of their uh, great work they are doing in uh, Nigeria uh, for, uh, uh, for education and uh, capacity development. Cameron Green from the University of Pretoria is, uh, is going to share some of the work and research activities on GeoNode for data management. Paulo uh, Caesar from University of Columbia, you know, I, uh, hopefully he will join us soon and he's going to present on GIS with uh, OSGO tools. And finally, I will be talking, uh, sharing some of the ideas on open principles in science and education. And we will follow that with uh, questions and discussions. So as I told as uh, in the beginning itself, uh, the, uh, the World Commons Week is a much broader kind of big events happening for the whole week. And there are so many webinars uh, happening. So if you are interested to join any of these webinars, you know, please join. And I, I, if I understand correctly, all of them are recorded as well. So even if you are not able to attend some of them, which are, which has, for example, the October 6th one or 7th one, you should be able to view them later in the World Commons Week website. Uh, so, you know, so, so please go to the website, the website of the World's Common Week, you can see on the screen. Uh, and you can also see the last year's uh, presentations from last year. So it will give you a broad idea of so many amazing work that has been going on in this uh, discipline, in, in common scholarships and practice. So I want, once again want to welcome all of you to the, uh, the World uh, Commons Week and to Geo for All uh, mini conference that we are hosting today. And I want to wish everyone a very productive week of, of celebrating the common scholarship and practice. And now I want to hand over to Victoria to introduce Geo for All. Victoria. Yes. Victoria, can you? Uh, it looks like she's muted. She, yeah, Victoria, you're muted. So you like to. Uh, so you, uh, do you have to sh stop my screen? Let me make sure. Maybe I have to stop my screen. Yeah, I'm going to try to unmute her from here. Uh, Victoria, can you hear us? It rolled out your mouse to the bottom of the interface, and then on the lower left, you see the mic icon. Oh, so Victoria is having some internet problems, so she'll be re rejoining. Using a different browser. Oh, yeah, she's very she great. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. My internet here is, um, there's a storm coming, so something dropped. Okay, no worries. Um, okay, so let me. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Yes, we are. <laughs> May I make one suggestion? Yes. Um, so Chief, maybe at this point for internet bandwidth, maybe you turn off your video. Okay, yeah, sure, thanks. And yeah. Victoria, I don't know if you can turn your video on if you want, but um, so maybe the speakers can always be viewed. Okay, okay yeah. Just a suggestion. Raphael, yes. what do you think? Yeah, that's a great idea. I say, okay, so I see it's showing now. Sorry about yes. that. Um, okay, so Geo for All falls within OSGEO. They help with the management and providing some funds, etc. But it's actually a collaboration between um, ICA, ISPRS, um, U. Um, sorry, the acronym escaped now. Um, but it's very wide, so it is not only focused on open source software, but also open data, open education, etc. So, um, Geo for All, you can find more information about it on the OSGEO website. You'll see some resources um, where you can 
the floors, etc. There's also a list of geothermal labs. There are currently um, over 140 labs over the world. Um, here you can see some of the distribution. These labs are not um, everyone actually, as we are currently in the process of collecting the points um, of the locations of the labs. So there will be quite a bit more, especially over Europe and in America. Um, but we're working on getting more in Africa over the next year. Then, um, so yeah, you'll find more information on all the specific labs. Uh, you can contact person information, for example, for our, at our department. Uh, you'll see the information as well as contact persons um, in case you want to work with a specific university. So to jo join a lab, if you are, um, okay, sorry, I just see that the screen is maybe a bit lagging, but on the main Joe for all site, uh, you'll see that, um, just, oops, so we have a different computer here to see what we see, but it seems that it's uh, there. It's updating now. Um, so on the Geo for All page, you'll see there is a submit your lab tab. If you click this, you will get to a form. Uh, a form that will actually allow you to fill in your lab's information to um, submit for a, a application to become part of Geo for All. Once we've verified your information, you will get a short email from me asking for some final information. And we are working on getting more close work between the regional chairs as well and the labs to help guide them into various types of activities that is possible. So this is a new initiative or not um, new, but trying to improve on an existing in, um, initiative to just get a bit more um, interaction between the regional chairs as well as the labs, especially the new labs. I'm not sure if you can see the updated screen, but the next part I want to quickly mention is that one of the partners with Geo for All is Youth Mappers. That is actually where Victor, I think, got familiar with Geo for All. So he will tell you a bit more about their work, but through um, the use of through Youth Mappers, uh, Geo for All has a very good connection now within Africa as the majority of the youth mapping chapters are within North America as well as Africa. So at our university, we also have a youth mapping lab and we do a lot of work with especially school learners to get them into mapping and using OSM, OpenStreetMap, is a very good first step into producing this. Then um, some other activities that happen at various labs. So at our university, um, Cameron will also tell you a bit more about GeoNote and how we use GeoNote to use GeoNote to manage and store data for various fields. In this case, specifically working with architects. So another great example of um, with mappers is polymapper. I do a lot of work in Italy around mapping as well as how do we visualize and use the data very productively. Um, some other examples is in North Carolina, the university they created the tangible landscape, which some of you might be familiar with, where you it's an interactive sand pit where you can build a virtual environment and see how these changes would actually impact this, what, how a certain change would impact this environment. So, um, they, this is a very nice teaching tool for especially undergrad students and school learners. Then some other activities that I would want to highlight is Mr. Davis. 
they have a map time, a monthly map time or like a weekly map time where they get together within the university as well as other community members where they just talk about something cool within the geospatial environment. So some of the upcoming map times that they have, for example, is on cloud computing, um, introduction into SQL, how do we connect maps in a library environment? So this is also something very nice at the university to get everyone together and discuss some of the topics. Um, there's very much more examples, but as the screen sharing with the browser is not working so nicely, I do apologize for that. I would want to just lastly point you to the Joker All newsletter, which you'll also find at the bottom of the Joker All page. There um, is always activities highlighted, and if you at your tab any interesting activity, please do share it with the editor so that more activities can be highlighted. Sorry again for the technical difficulties and thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, Victoria. I think that's fantastic. You know, so uh, hopefully those of you are new to Geoforum, you have got some ideas of uh, where to go. You know, so as Victoria told, if you go to our website, You'll find all the information of not only how to join, but also all the resources. So if you are an educator, you know you can just directly go to, you know, you know for example, finding you know, in, in your classrooms, in your research, or for your projects. You know, we have three main headings where you can directly go and uh, find all the what are the uh, specific software tools you can use for your, uh, for your uh, educational uh, needs as well. So thanks, Victoria. And if any of you want to contact uh, you know, for more details, you know, feel free to email Victoria uh, for any details you need on Geoforward, and she'll be able to help you on that. Uh, uh, another uh, thing uh, just to mention was, you know, you know there is uh, regional chairs who are, for example, North America, South America, uh, Africa, uh, Asia. So you can also uh, you know, more than happy to, you know, if you, you want to uh, get any help, you to contact them as well. And their details are all in the uh, geo website. Uh, and in fact, the next person there is well, one of our geo for our regional chairs, Sergio. Uh, and he'll be, uh, he can uh, welcome Sergio and I will request you to, you know, uh, to present uh, your work on uh, Givesic Batovi and also you can, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, Bureau of America Geo for All it will help you, Sophia. Those those will see new as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, uh, Sergio, just uh, before you start, again, a reminder to everyone if you can please mute your microphones in the lower left corner of the interface. Be sure that you're, uh, you're muted, uh, except for Sergio. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I will share my, my screen. Do you see it now? It's coming in a second. It's coming. Uh, yes, we can see it. Can you see it? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Well, first of all, um, good day. Um, good morning for me. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning here in Uruguay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the organizers, uh, for letting us share our experience. A special thanks to Charlie, uh, Rafael, Sushid, Victoria, and, and others there uh, for this opportunity. Uh, what we are going to present uh, is um, our, um, our experience um, of promoting open geospatial technologies in schools, and particularly in, sky, in high schools here in, in my country, uh, all over the country. Um, I would like to apologize for my English, as it is not my my native language. Uh, so have patience with <laughs> that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Yeah, we're getting you. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can hear me. Project help, I will be. Oh, okay. Not, not mine, always. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm I love it. By the way, Hello. Uh, uh, you are talking? Yeah, yeah, I'm taking conference. Maybe some. Okay, okay. I, I, I am hearing other voices there. Yeah, we need to mic. We need the microphone. Okay. No, no, not yet. Just a second. We still have a, a microphone. Okay. Okay. Um, continuing with with this presentation, uh, I would like to um, to tell you about this initiative, which was um, born uh, almost ten years ago by um, a, 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 an initiative from the, the place where I work, the, that is the Ministry of, uh, of Transport and Public Works, uh, that uh, we developed this project um, uh, with. Plan Ceibal and uh, the Administration of Public Education. Uh, Plan Ceibal is the, um, the institution uh, in charge of um, what we have here as the first uh, experience of implementing the OLPC initiative, uh, the one laptop per child, that ensures that uh, every student in every school and high school all over the country has a computer and that uh, was an, a huge opportunity. Uh, which is uh, a way to um, promote the, um, the use of um, geospatial technologies and open um, by using open software um, uh, named Hevesi uh, Batubi because it's a uh, uh, it's a, an adaptation that we made from the um, uh, desktop software, the professional uh, desktop software, uh, GVC battery, uh, GVC, uh, sorry. Um, this, uh, this process uh, started, um, well, it was born uh, really in 2012. Uh, what we made there was to adjust uh, the GVC software to uh, the devices that we uh, were using uh, here in Uruguay um, in schools and high schools uh, through Plan Ceibal. That was a, a very um, difficult thing to do because the devices were not um, the, the usual laptops that we, we use in, in our works or in our private lives. And then in 2014, to 2016, what we made uh, was a new adjustment for uh, from HVC uh, Batobi that was already born uh, to the new computer equipment uh, that uh, Plan Seibal were, uh, were introducing. Um, because if when we started, uh, Plan Seibal has only one or two types of, of laptops, and now it has uh, almost um, 50 <laughs> times of, of, of laptops, which made uh, us um, to a new, new adjustments. And uh, we started promoting the use of this, uh, of this tool uh, in secondary education uh, through workshops to um, teachers and uh, students. And uh, we made a, a lot of workshops all over the, the country. But uh, we we thought that that a better way to promote the, the use of the tool was to develop um, a course that uh, that continues with a with a contest. So uh, we we developed this course uh, that was uh, very not only in the software, but in, in, in theories of photographic information. And um, when the course uh, finishes, we invite the, um, the assistants to, uh, to, um, to a competition to, to, 
to develop uh, projects uh, with students using the, the tool Hevesic Battery. And the first part of this uh, initiative, uh, the course, uh, is in B learning mode. So we have um, um, online educational platform named CREA uh, that uh, is being developed, uh, is developed by uh, Plan Seibal. There you can see how it, it looks. And um, complementing this um, online uh, training, we uh, organized uh, workshops. Uh, this year we had uh, four um, locations. Uh, we have uh, simultaneously uh, in other uh, three locations uh, through video conference. And you can see there the, the locations of uh, the workshops. Uh, these are cities uh, in my country, Uruguay, that uh, cover all, all, the, um, all of it. So uh, we ensure that uh, every teacher can, uh, can do this workshop and no one uh, is left uh, away. Here we have some photos of the, of the workshops. Um, this is in, in Durazno. Uh, we have the, the way we, we teach here. The, the thing you are, you are seeing uh, below is the laptop uh, in Montevideo. And uh, above, you can see the screen uh, that we share with uh, the ones that are in Durazno. That is other location. And we have another photos of, of the same uh, workshops. In, in other locations. Okay, after, after the, the workshops uh, finish, we invite the, the assistants, the, the teachers, to the uh, second phase of this, uh, of this project, that is the competition. Uh, the competition has uh, three phases. Uh, one is the presentation, uh, in which they present their, their um, the proposal. Uh, we have an, an exchange with the advisory team that I am um, part of it, uh, with representatives from uh, the administration of, of public education and Plan Seibal to shape uh, this uh, first proposal. Uh, we also have a, a training in the use of, of, the, of the platform, the online uh, training platform because uh, it is going to be used later in the development of the projects that are uh, competing in the in the contest and finally they present the the project uh, in their final shape the second phase of the competition uh, that we are now in uh, in it um, in this is the, the third edition of this contest, and we are uh, now uh, developing the, the projects. Um, <clears throat> uh, what we have is um, in Korea, they have each project a place in where they share documents, the um, shared um, shape files, uh, they, they have um, forums in which they make questions, etc. And we also, uh, um, the project has tutoring by students that we are going to, to explain later. And finally, um, the, um, the contest uh, in which uh, they defend the, their project uh, by video conference and they present a, a report uh, with maps um, which they explain to the advisory team that is the, the one is going to judge which are the, the winners and they finally are invited to socialize and and share the, the all the projects that uh, participate in the contest uh, here in uruguay 
all together. And the, um, the contests are between um, groups of uh, one or more teacher and um, not less than three students and no more than five students. Uh, generally, they are uh, of five students and, and one or two, two teachers. And they come all to, to Montevideo to, to share their experience uh, when the competition finishes. So the presentation, uh, we have um, a presentation of the proposal through a form that is a, an, an online form they, they fill. And there it is all in Spanish because that's the language here. And um, then the the teachers that lead the, the projects are invited to um, to share and exchange uh, their points of view with the advisory team. There you have uh, one of the presentation of, of the of their teachers. This is at the, the north of Uruguay in a, a little village called Villa Constitución. And there we have another of the projects that are presenting. That's uh, the way they, they present their, their proposal. And finally, they exchange uh, points of view between them and with the advisory team. Uh, then we have a uh, training the use of, of, the, of the platform that they are going to use to uh, complement the development of their projects. And they finally present formally the project. Uh, the development of the, of the contest that uh, more or less uh, last uh, three months, um, they have a place uh, in the platform, uh, where you can see a, a snapshot of, the, of, of one of the of the groups, and here we have um, at the the forum. Uh, you you can see there some of the of the things that uh, they exchange with each other or with the um, or with the advisory team. Uh, each uh, teacher and students has access to this uh, place in the CREA platform. Then the phases of the project are, um, are uh, complemented with a tutoring that uh, is done by students from Surveying, from the University of the, the National University of Uruguay, Universidad de la República, and uh, also from students for, uh, from the cartography technical degree, also from the Universidad de la República, that ensure us that the, um, um, the teachers and students have um, support from, from a technical point of view, in, um, especially in the use of the, of the tool, of the GVC battery. Um, I now I'm going to show uh, share with you um, the the third uh, phase of the of, of this uh, contest uh, with images of the last edition uh, 2018 because we are we haven't got uh, yet any any of this year because we are uh, still in, in the development uh, development of this contest. We have. Uh, we are going to have uh, um, this, uh, this month uh, and, and the beginning of the, of the next month in November uh, the project pre-defense by, by video conference and here we have images uh, from last year this is the mode we, we use they they can see us and we can see them and they share uh, their um, experiences, their, their maps and report and explain us what they have done and what difficulties they had um, uh, they have with the, the use of the tool or the development of the, uh, of the project. In the upper uh, left corner, you can see the advisory, the advisory team 
and in the, the central part, the one of the groups that are the students from a little village uh, called Aiwa. And this is how they share uh, their, their projects. And their uh, maps and reports. They present um, um, a map, uh, one or more maps that um, support the, the project and a report. Here we have some examples of last year's contest. And uh, they finally um, share their experience by, uh, by in a face-to-face -face mode uh, where they know each other and it's a beautiful experience. Um, the one we, we love to share because we find it uh, 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 something very, very, very nice <laughs> for us. It is very nice to see the, the enthusiasm of, of these children that they are from villages very small in, in, in all over the country. Uh, and they, 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 also, uh, they also find it a good experience uh, and they, they love to, to share the, their experience to know what others had, had done. Mm. We are now seeing that the one that won uh, the, the contest uh, in the last year edition. And here we have a list of the projects that are participating this year. Uh, as you can see, they are uh, from all over the country. We had uh, three from the, the capital city, but we have uh, four from another uh, department. Here the country is divided in, in, in departments, in what we, what another countries are states or provinces, here are departments. And the, the, we have there uh, three from uh, Montevideo, four from Salto, two from Cerro Largo, and one from Canelones. And um, what we thought was a good experience, um, we, we, uh, what made us think that it was not only for us a good one, uh, was that we invited the, the winner of the first year's edition to an international competition, which they, they finally uh, won the first prize in the category of uh, best high school student work. So that um, made us very happy because uh, we, uh, although we were sure that they were doing a good work, uh, to have um, uh, to have they winning an international contest made us uh, think that we are we were in the in the right path. And here we can, you can have more information, you can find more information and I'm going to share this presentation later. Uh, you, you can see here we have the, uh, um, the page of the GBC Association which developed this, uh, the, the GBC uh, software. Uh, you can download GBC uh, Batovi through this link and you can uh, also uh, share um, or subscribe to the, the list uh, through, um, uh, through this mailing list we have, uh, especially for Hershey to b And we also have a blog uh, with, with, where you can find there uh, the link. Uh, that was all we, uh, we would like to share and thank you for, for your patience. Thank you very much, Sergio. It's really inspiring work that you have shared with us, I think, from uh, Uruguay, uh, and not only for Uruguay, but I think for all of our other colleagues around the world who are working in education, the work that you just shared is really inspiring, and I really hope other colleagues will be able to build upon some of the work that you just shared uh, with, with the wider communities as well. And, uh, you know, the 
uh, especially the teacher training programs, I think for Geo4 or is one of the main priorities for us for the future. And we look forward to get your advice and inputs for that uh, when as we move forward to expand our education uh, to school level education as well. Thank you, Sergio. So now moving to our next presenter uh, is Victor. Victor, are you ready now? From Unique Mappers. Uh, so Victor will be sharing some of the work that they have been doing. Uh, uh, Victor? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Great, yes, we can hear you. Can so. you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. So you can share your screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you can still hear me. Clearly. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, Victor, we can hear you. And may I also ask other colleagues, uh, you know, please mute your microphones. You know, so only Victor can. Uh, so Victor, we can hear you well. So please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm talking on. Uh, open source and uh, open data for all, uh, tips, action, and uh, opportunities. Um, just want to seize the opportunity to uh, let us know what we are doing as a unique MAPAS team in Nigeria. Um, uh, this is a preview of the presentation um i just want to give a brief uh, about a uh, unique mapas team is a uh, a team that started in 2017 uh, uh is a job uh, in nigeria and uh, is an emerging community ngo in nigeria uh we are a local community of osgo and the local community of uh, open street map in nigeria we are very passion driven for uh, gender equality and inclusive community uh, we are driven uh, we are passionate about open source geospatial empowerment as well as uh, mobile data collection and access we are very passionate about open data mapping engagement and uh, humanitarian disaster response mapping. And we have a mandate um, to engage uh, the youth in various universities in Nigeria uh, using uh, geospatial technology, open source geospatial technology. Uh, but now notwithstanding, we have a wider scope of uh, uh, for citizen science community engagement and uh, we are affiliated to uh, humanitarian open street map a chapter of youth mapas network and uh, citizen uh, science data uh, citizen science association uh, since our focus for this uh, presentation uh, a mini conference uh, is on uh, sustainable development goals. I just had to make a selection of uh, uh, some of the SDG targets uh, that are measurable using our uh, open data mapping. And uh, you can see one of them, the SDG goal number three, talking about uh, good health and uh, well being. Uh, um, SDG number four, uh, dealing with quality education. And on that, we drive uh, youth empowerment as well as map barriers to education and uh, provide detailed maps uh, to ensure that uh, 
uh, there's value added to the quality of education. Then we have uh, uh, goal number five, uh, which is very, very uh, uh, important to us and uh, really drives our passion, and that is uh, gender equality. And uh, uh, using this, we try to provide, uh, um, we, we use open data mapping to provide uh, access to important services to women, such as uh, health facilities and uh, education. And uh, we are also uh, very passionate about uh, providing open data mapping for uh, protection of girls from female genital mutilation. Uh, then uh, the other targets are number seven, which deals with affordable and uh, clean energy. And then uh, number 13 goal is also very, very important to us because uh, it's part of uh, our current projects, uh, the ongoing projects uh, 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 we are handling and uh, which deals with the disaster uh, risk reduction and uh, climate issues. And then uh, goal number 17, partnership uh, for uh, the goals. So uh, we try as much to engage uh, the government agencies and the private sector in order to promote uh, open data and contribute to mapping output to uh, uh, community. Um, um, when we're looking at uh, open source and uh, open data uh, SDG focus, <clears throat> uh, we also need to understand actually what uh, open source and open data means. And uh, we can say that uh, open source is driven by accessibility and freedom to use. And that is to say that uh, any uh, open source project, uh, it refers to any open source project, products, or initiatives that embraces uh, principles of open exchange, uh, collaborative participation, and community-oriented program. And so, uh, as uh, Joe for All uh, uh, Lab, uh, our SDG focus is driven by principle of education, and collaboration and uh, open science. Uh, open source geospatial uh, technology actually drives uh, open data community engagement because uh, without uh, open uh, source geospatial uh, uh, softwares and platforms, uh, open data community engagement uh, might not really be effective, especially in uh, developing countries uh, of ours. Uh, it, we, it, through open source uh, geospatial technology, we find out that everyone is empowered uh, uh, for open source geospatial education, and uh, everyone can also be engaged with uh, open source geospatial projects and uh, there is that assurance for collaborative approach uh, towards uh, software development. Uh, open data provides free and accessible information to use, to use as, as, as you wish. And so open data means free and available data for everyone. And so, as one of the Joe for All labs, uh, we anchor on open data. Uh, we, we anchor on provision of open data, uh, open data mapping, so that uh, it could be accessible to everyone. Um, looking at the open source uh, geospatial empowerment tools, uh, just like Victoria earlier mentioned, uh, some of those uh, platforms and so on. If we go to uh, our uh, uh, OSGO platform, you can find out that uh, uh, the tools are categorized uh, into desktop mapping tools. Uh, you can see the link there. 
and then uh, we have uh, mapping services just uh, such as GeoNode, GeoServer, and MapServer. And uh, we have the mobile mapping app such as uh, Leaflet, GeoPaparazzi, and uh, OpenLayer. So these are uh, open source geospatial uh, empowerment tools that uh, uh, is available for uh, anyone who wants to engage in uh, open source uh, uh, GIS. Um, now when you look at uh, uh, our focus on open data mapping and community, uh, you find out that uh, we have a, a method, we have the following method, one of them is uh, the web-based method, and uh, it is basically uh, uh, where we focus uh, our community efforts uh, using the open street uh, using the engage uh, the community uh, for geospatial empowerment and uh, uh, in open source and uh, uh, open data mapping. Uh, you can also see another method in data mapping, uh, which is uh, that of drone, and then you have. And then uh, the third one is uh, the field-based method, where we go to the field uh, to collect uh, data uh, using our mobile uh, 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 data collection uh, platforms. Um, in terms of actions or activities uh, uh, driving our community, um, we focus on youth uh, uh, empowerment and uh, community engagement, and uh, you can see from the slide, uh, community training and mapping uh, involving uh, uh, the university students. And then uh, we, we also drive uh, uh, the teaching of open source uh, geospatial technology, uh, providing uh, uh, opportunity for students uh, to know uh, that you can use uh, free and open source software uh, for geospatial uh, research and application. And uh, in, in our community engagement, we respond to vulnerable communities, just like you can see on the uh, slide there, the flood uh, area. And uh, we are going to explain that much later. Uh, we can see that uh, we also uh, embark on community outreach, uh, not just to the youth, but uh, uh, to uh, an inclusive community, uh, which uh, includes both the retired uh, 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 civil servants uh, who are no longer active in service. Uh, we train them and engage them in uh, um, 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 disaster response uh, mapping. And uh, we also reach out to uh, stakeholders that need to make use of this uh, uh, open uh, data uh, mapping, uh, such as the Red Cross. Uh, just like last year, we had uh, an engagement with uh, the Red Cross Netherlands, and uh, we were able to map uh, um, an area that was vulnerable to flood. And after that, uh, we were able to share uh, the data and uh, share the knowledge of uh, using the open uh, map platform uh, to the Nigerian Red Cross uh, River State. Um, we also uh, uh, engage, we also engaged in uh, uh, community empowerment, especially in the, most of the investors in Nigeria. Uh, currently, we've been able to reach uh, at least about 10 or more. Uh, investors and uh, trying to empower them and train them in uh, open source uh, uh, geospatial technology and uh, open data mapping. Uh, and so through uh, uh, quality, uh, through education and uh, networking, we engage volunteers uh, in various uh, community, investing communities. Um, and another area of focus for us uh, is uh, the gender equality uh, in uh, open data uh, mapping. And uh, for that, we, 
We are very, very uh, female gender sensitive in mission. Uh, we are female gender sensitive in planning and uh, as well as uh, 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 inclusive in action. We want to carry everyone around and uh, uh, we provide a, a female gender friendly uh, community uh, so that uh, we could drive uh, 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 um, the digital uh, divide uh, um, uh, gap, we could drive to a close of the digital divide uh, uh, gap. And then uh, uh, we also uh, make sure that uh, in order to uh, drive our gender equality, we carry, we, 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 we carry along uh, uh, female gender inclusive leaders uh, in, our, uh, in our team leader, uh, in our community uh, uh, training and so on. And then uh, we ensure that we, we involve uh, uh, the female gender in planning and uh, as well as uh, uh, focus tasks. We carry them along and uh, to see that uh, the community glows with female gender uh, participation. Um, in our uh, gender equality drive, uh, as of 2017, uh, uh, when this team started uh, 12 June, we had about 25 uh, female and 33 male registered team members. And uh, we also had a Let Girls Map a, a, a chat group with about 60 ladies. And uh, we were able to host our first Mapathon uh, in June uh, 2017, uh, which recorded about 60 female and 135 uh, male, and a total of 195. So um, we did a serious campaign to see how the, the female gender could be carried along uh, in this uh, uh, empowerment. And then uh, uh, for us to ensure that uh, we keep this vision alive, uh, we, 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 we ensure that uh, there is a one-on-one -on -one training and uh, group, uh, group chat uh, communication, group chat uh, mentoring, and then uh, coordinators mentoring, seminar presentation, and the uh, equal gender mapping contest. And in fact, uh, we had a mapping contest uh, uh, that was last year, and uh, we call it uh, OSM Fight uh, for about two weeks. And as you can see from the, uh, uh, the leaders board there, you can see first round and then final round, and uh, you can see the OSM uh, usernames. The first name there is a uh, female, uh, Valerie143, uh, mapping around uh, 5,021 building just within two weeks. And, uh, uh, and uh, finally had about 7,465 uh, uh, 7, uh, buildings that were mapped. And the second position there is also a girl, a, a female, and uh, the fourth person. I can see that on our leaders board, uh, 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 because of the passion for gender equality uh, drive, uh, we were able to have uh, uh, three uh, 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 female uh, mappers uh, leading uh, the contest. Um, Another area uh, our SDG focus has been all this while is uh, on uh, disaster risk reduction. Uh, just like I mentioned, SDG number 13, uh, dealing with climate change and uh, uh, vulnerabilities. And currently, uh, we are mapping uh, uh, two local governments uh, that is vulnerable to oil spill and river state. And uh, for this uh, two uh, local governments, uh, we created a, a mapping tax on a uh, hot, uh, uh, hot tax manager. And uh, we, we, we made one available for non-resident, uh, uh, non-Nigerian -re non resident 
uh, mappers, while the other one was exclusively for uh, mappers that are resident in Nigeria. And uh, our finding, uh, uh, as the project continues, shows that uh, um, the, the, the mappers outside Nigeria have been able to map about 89% of that uh, mapping tax. Whereas uh, the tax that was exclusively, that is meant exclusively for Nigeria, uh, currently is about uh, 49%. And uh, that shows that uh, uh, in Nigeria, uh, the passion for, 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 for uh, open data mapping uh, is not actually driven by, uh, by, by the motivation to contribute uh, to be charitable, to be humanitarian, uh, but rather by other motivation. Okay. And, uh, beside that, um, uh, beside that, uh, uh, you find out that uh, 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 the, the, the project keeps on going. Uh, we also mapped, uh, we also have a project on flooding, as you can see there. Uh, that's our focus on disaster reduction. So, um, conclusively, uh, we have opportunities for mappers, and uh, uh, our focus is on mapping to close data gaps, uh, make invisible communities visible, and uh, help policymakers to make decisions uh, by by to make uh, decisions that are informed by open uh, data. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Victor. That was a very interesting presentation and a lot of great work you, are, you and your colleagues are doing uh, on all the, I think around six SDG goals you are mentioning. And I think all of them, you have it contributing really amazing work. I think it will be really helpful for... May I ask uh, colleagues who are not uh, presenting to please mute your microphone, please. So. Uh, so we are very grateful that you were able to share some of the work that you are doing uh, with the wider community. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Victor, for your presentation. So let us, now let us move to our next presentation uh, from the University of Pretoria. So Cameron Green, are you ready now? Uh, hi, yes, I am. I'm going to share my screen with you now. What's going on? No. Hi, sorry. Um, I just quickly have to change a preference setting. I don't know why. Hello, Cameron. Can you? Uh... Are you trying to share your screen now? Yes, I am busy trying to share it. Okay, good. Um, just give me a minute there, please. Sure, sure. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. okay, there we go. Um, you should be able to see my screen now? Yes, you can. Thank okay, brilliant. Okay, hi. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak um, and thanks to everyone for attending. I hope not to bore you too much with um, GeoNode. So I'm just going to speak a bit about GeoNode for data management and sharing. Um, it says part of my master's dissertation. I've been working on this for the last year. So the project we're involved in, I'll give you more details on the project in the next slide, but we have a, a challenge that I've decided that I'm just going to explain. The, the challenge that we're attacking is that um, each year a lot of data is generated for the same area, but it's not stored in an accessible way that students can actually use this data. So um, ar architecture students actually go out and collect your data and then they um, don't store it properly. They just save it on a Google Drive and then they lose access to it, which prevents groups from previous uh, following years from being able to use that data. So the project decided that the students would actually benefit from a structured data storage platform that supports data sharing, the reuse of data, data integration, and data visualization. 
So that's very important for the students. And it also allows the students that are from the previous year's collection to be able to view them. Sorry, so future students can view the previous year's data. It means it can be more flexible, reliable, and better planned participatory planning approaches. And the problems within a study area can be identified quicker, which means that you can spend more time on solving a problem than particularly trying to identify your problem. Okay, so um, the project name is actually called Stitch in the City from Micro Data to Macro Views. Um, it is a joint project between the National Research Foundation or the NRF of South Africa and the Swedish Foundation for International Cooperation in Research and Higher Education, or STINT. So it's um, that two architecture studios, one in Sweden and one in South Africa, are both involved in knowledge generation from data collected through inquiry-based learning in spatial design disciplines. So just a bit of um, content, uh, context about the two studios, the one in, in South Africa. So that's for fourth year architecture students at the University of Pretoria. And they have been working in their area of interest um, called Mamelodi East since 2011. Whereas the Swedish, um, they are master students and they enrolled in a course for design and planning for social inclusion at, the Univ at Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg. So in South Africa, uh, Mamelodi East is actually a disadvantaged township in the east of Pretoria. Services and infrastructure have been greatly hindered by the rapid growth of informal settlements. So that's hindering um, governments from being able to provide the necessary infrastructure. Whereas Hammerkulen is the study area in Sweden is actually part of the Swedish Million, uh, Million Program, which is an initiative driven by the Swedish government aiming to provide affordable homes to improve the housing standards in Sweden. So we can see there's two completely different contexts here, but still the kind of same kind of data that we're going to need. So the mapping that gets done by the students in South Africa actually introduces them to the research field of human settlements and urbanization. Whereas in Sweden, the students learn that different methods and tools are used in order to get knowledge about both the physical and economical and cultural and social environments of the area, as well as get a basic understanding. So the purpose of actually these exercises in both countries going out and collecting data is in South Africa is that the students get to read the area, which enables them to understand the deeper socioeconomic layers and social capital of the urban condition. Whereas in Sweden, they, the purpose of the data collection is just to familiarize the students with the area. They can gain some knowledge, which will lead to preparation, analysis, and planning of the development of their individual projects. And um, they both collect their data through very similar methods, such as the transect walks, unstructured interviews, and participatory um, methods to enable the students to collect data. So the data that was collected in South Africa was movement routes, networks, social structure, economic activity, social events, places of importance, and important people. Uh, in Sweden, they collected qualitative and descriptive spatial data use of places, uh, the perception of places, and desired development of places. So we can see it's very different data that can be quite tricky to store and maintain and reuse over years. So the data formats uh, that came out are very similar. So they were photographs, they were drawings, videos, aerial imageries, uh, aerial images with um, notes, interviews, which are voice recordings and CSV files. So they collected their data in also very similar ways through surveys, questionnaires, transit walks, um, and digital tools. Now this is where they differed. In South Africa, they used EpiClick 5, and in Sweden, they used Mapchene. But they both give you the same output, so it's the same tool, basically. So uh, in South Africa, the data was visualized, obviously, through their sketchbooks, photographs, or models, which are then digitized through many programs, such as Adobe Photoshop. And in Sweden, data is visualized through um, Stickers on maps, so they illustrate how a map is, how a place is perceived by color coding, so red being not well perceived, green being well perceived. Um, they illustrate, they have images, they have mind maps, they have digital 3D models, they have physical models and text. And then they use um, different analysis methods for just generalized. So for detailed mapping, the architects in South Africa use AutoCAD, um, ArcGIS, Mappable, Google Earth, Coral Draw. 
and in Sweden, they actually um, use a map-based analysis such as the Lynch analysis. So now we can see going back to the challenge that's actually being tackled. You can see now that each year a lot of data is generated and that the students are unable to actually get access to the previous year's data. So now we see where the, they, how the students would benefit from a centralized structured data storage system and also how to allow the students to be able to have access to the previous years so they can spend more time tackling the problem than finding a problem. So here we can see their current um, data management system. It's a bit um, analog and it's quite difficult to find. So you can imagine trying to find someone's sketch of an area from 2015 in that pile. It'll be quite tricky, um, take a lot of your time and you won't, necessarily find it in the end. And there's also a lot of paper lying around. So all these images you can see, it's not well organized. So they need to structure this and make it a bit better. So, um, okay, there we go. So the two study areas that this project decided to actually focus on were Mamelodi East in South Africa and Hamakulin in Sweden. So the two major components of the project are actually mapping and data integration as well as the visualization and implementation of the data. So these are the aspects we had to look at and so forth. So now we know exactly what the problem is. It's there's data lying around that's actually not very friendly, not know how to use it. It's not really stored correctly. So what is a, a viable possible solution for these architects to use? We need something that's friendly, something that they can understand because they don't have the geospatial background that most of us have. So we propose Geonode as the solution. So Geonode is just an open source platform that facilitates creation, sharing, and collaborative use of geospatial and non-geospatial data. It's a web-based application, meaning you don't need to download anything onto your computer. You just log on the internet and you're away. And it also allows for the uploading of geospatial data, images, and documents through a very user-friendly interface. So now we can see the geospatial data gets uploaded, all their sketches, their images, their drawings, and any other documents, their text files, all of that can be uploaded. So we said to them, now they asked us, why should they use Geonode? So we said it can be used to manage and catalog their geospatial data and keep track of the metadata related to the data. So being able to search something through the metadata is just as important as being able to try and store the data. So it's easy to use because you can annotate and store your data very easily. You can share your data amongst people and you can create interactive maps. So that's a very simple basic map that you can use to take into the field or just demonstrate your purpose. So here we can see now we have the three files from 2015, um, 17 and 16. Oh gosh, sorry. And then we go back here to see having all of those papers lying around. And now we can see that all of the data, oh gosh, there's a bit of a lag, sorry. Um, all the data actually gets organized into one user, one interface that's very easy, very um, friendly for people and much easier to search. We can see now that everything is organized into neat little ways. And it's quite nice because multiple stakeholders or collaborators can actually get involved in the project and edit the data, use the data, download the data. And Geonode is also especially useful if they want to um, occur over space, uh, if the project wants to occur over several years for a longitudinal study. So architects, like they said in, in Mamelodi East have been working there since 2011. So we can imagine that's a lot of data, but if it's not correctly stored, it'd be quite tricky to find and use. So the documents that you can actually upload into Geonode are wide and variant. So it all depends on how you set up your Geonode. So if you set it up as your basic configuration, you have um, just your normal, you just have a selected few documents. Whereas if you actually configure it and develop it yourself, you can have, a, you can have many more document styles. But for a basic Geonode configuration, the one we've given to the architects, they can store um, their markup languages, so the SLDs for styling, the XMLs for data, of their metadata. They can store um, documents such as their Word, PowerPoint, Excels, um, their PDFs, or they can even, if they don't use Microsoft Word and they use um, the open source um, applications, they can also upload those documents to Geonode. They can you upload your compression or your zip files. 
So I call these the cheat files because anything GeoNote doesn't accept, you just throw in a file, you zip it, you upload it. And it works nicely like that. Then you can upload images, such as your normal JPEGs, your TIFFs, your GeoTIFFs, um, PNGs. So images to architects are very important. And the spatial data you can upload are your GeoTIFFs, shapefiles, and AFCII. So um, if you develop your GeoNode in, if the basic GeoNode only supports these two file formats in spatial data, but if you configure it in the development phase, you can actually um, expand it that it supports geo packages, uh, geo JSONs, JSONs, um, it's endless. So I just wanna show you, GeoNode is actually a lot more popular than people think. Uh, so the world, Food program has their own GeoNode where they store data, allow people to explore it, use it, and everything. Uh, Innovation Lab also have their own GeoNode, so they um, work with disasters and risk management, and they have their own data set. So you can see it clearly can be customized as many ways as you would like. The Water Information Network System also have their own GeoNode, and you can see these GeoNodes are very popular because they have. 300 plus registered users on these geonodes. So just to show you, this is um, part of the, ge the geonode that we developed for the architects. Um, so for cataloging and managing data, we can see that data is um, it's stored neatly. You can search your text. You can search your data, uh, the data for the meta file. So if you want to search for a buildings file, it'll pull up the buildings. Um, we can, you can search through keywords. If you assign a keyword when you upload a layer, um, you can select it. They're, all the keywords are there, so you don't have to type. They just, it's just click. And you can see there, it's uploaded. You can search by type. If you want your raster vector, you can search which categories. You can see who owns it. But one nice thing that I also like about Geno is that you can search by region. So you can see here, I'm searching for data in Sweden, and it pops up all the data that I have in Sweden that um, was in that area at that time. Now I'm searching for data in South Africa and there's no layers in South Africa. because This project's only been in Sweden so far. Now you can search by extent. So you can see South Africa, no layers. As soon as I move the map to Sweden, all my layers then appear. So this is quite user friendly. It's very nice. It's not, um, it doesn't take a lot of GIS knowledge to be able to do this. It is very user friendly and just viewing the data. So managing it now, you can download it. You can view your metadata. You can have your summary at the bottom. So who owns it? What are the regions? What's its title? If there's a license applied to it, uh, then you go to your metadata and it tells you a lot more. So it tells you when it was uploaded, what is the type of the format. You can provide an appropriate abstract if you wish to your data. You can tell you EPSG, the language, contact points you to contact if you have questions about the data and so forth. Um, so now in terms of the visualization, implementation and integration of data, we can see that um, GeoNode allows users to create the map. So here's just a basic map we created with the students just so they can get a feel and understand how to do it. So we can see this is the study area of Hamakulin and we have buildings and we have the students. So they have the, um, the individual preferences of a study area. So you can see now where the uh, connection comes in between collecting how architects feel about a place and giving that a spatial identity, giving it a location on earth. So here we have that the, we, um, the students mapped places they liked and they didn't like, and you can create uh, widgets. So that's the little pie graph I have on the side. So you can see clearly how many students like this area, how many students didn't they actually like this area. And it also integrates data because you can have as many layers as you would like on this map. So now a lot of people talk about GeoNodes reminds, it reminds them of something, but they can never exactly remember what it reminds them of because everything just sounds familiar. So a lot of people say it actually reminds them of spatial data infrastructures. And they are actually evolving concepts about facilitating, coordinating the exchange and sharing of spatial data and services between stakeholders from different levels in the geospatial community. So we can see that GeoNode covers all of those because you can exchange, you can share data, you can services, uh, different stakeholders such as students, lecturers, uh, all of them have access to the um, data in GeoNode and they all come from a different background. Uh, many countries have SDIs to make, um, to manage 
and use their geographic information assets better by taking the perspective that starts at the local level and then proceeds upwards in their governmental chain. And they also facilitate the sharing of geographic information and services through geo portals. So sharing relies on standards for interoperability. So I'd like to think that this project actually relates to uh, the goal 17 for partnerships for goals. But I also believe that it can actually relate to all of the sustainable development goals because through knowledge and um, information, you can actually make a lot of informed decisions which then actually do contribute towards the SDGs. So now SDIs and sustainable development actually have a big link. So geographic data is actually uh, required for, to monitor sustainable development goals so they can benchmark themselves for future years. Uh, multiple stakeholders also involved in data collection. So uh, you look back at GeoNode, you have many students collecting data and uploading it and then everyone has access to it. Statistical agencies or departments typically collect demographic information while other organizations collect geographic information. So again, we have different types of data being collected by different types of people it can all simply be uploaded to GeoNode. Um, so lastly, geographic information and services available through SDIs facilitate, um, uh, facilitate map production, analysis, and decision-making and planning of interventions for achieving the, globals, uh, the global goals for sustainable development. And in uh, relation to this and the World Comms Week, we are actually presenting a GeoNode workshop tomorrow at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. And we have, I think it's about 52 people from all around South Africa coming to this workshop to learn how they can use GeoNode in their company to achieve their goals and so forth. And yes, just like to thank all of you for listening. And yeah, that's me. Thank you very much, Cameron. Very interesting presentation and very uh, impactful presentation because uh, you know you correctly connected all the you know seventeen SDGs. And this is something I was I was going to point out later, but I think you know it is really timely. You were able to show how SDIs are so important and how tools like GeoNode you know help us achieve that. And some of the examples you spoke later, earlier as well on from the World Food Program. So all these kind of, you know, it just connects every single SDGs, you know, as you rightly pointed out. And I really hope colleagues, uh, you know, who are new to uh, ge geospatial technologies who can, who, who can think about ideas on, for example, in the developing world, many of the SDIs are, uh, you know, are still evolving and a lot of work need to be done. So, you know, they can, uh, you know, especially in the developing world, you know, uh, we really hope, you know, tools like GeoNode and uh, will help accelerate the progress to have robust systems in place. So, you know, from not only SDG monitoring, you know, this SDG monitoring is a very important aspect of collecting data and visualizing it, but also, you know, helping achieve these targets. It's very important to ensure we have the robust SDI infrastructures from the regional levels to the national level and to the global level. And fantastic presentation uh, to help uh, give us the perspective on from, from uh, student projects how it links to you know each of the SDGs uh, activities as well. So I want to thank again Cameron and Victoria and the University of Pretoria for sharing this uh, work they are doing. And you know I really hope uh, they, because I understand they are doing the workshop tomorrow as well. You know it again shows a practical example of capacity development. You know so colleagues who are coming for the workshop, hopefully they will learn these new ideas and then they will be able to go and implement these SDIs and uh, in their uh, companies or organizations uh, later as well. So I want to thank again Cameron. And now we'll move to the next uh, presentation. I do, I'm not sure if Paulo has joined us. I, I'm trying to see, if, is, is Paulo, are you, have you joined? I couldn't see in the list. Uh, if not, uh, you know, then I will have to move to the last presentation, which is my presentation. So, uh, uh, you know, if Paulo joins us, you know, then I will, uh, we will include him in, uh, as the uh, presentation later as well. So, uh, so let me just go to the presentation. Let me share my screen. How do I share? Yeah, roll the mouse to the bottom and then choose the share. Can you see my screen now? No, 
Not yet. So if you roll your mouse to the bottom of the interface, then it says the share icon. Yeah, let me just see if I is it not uh, share. Desktop one, maybe now. Let me see. Yeah, is it now it's working. Now it's working. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, hello, everyone. So uh, my, my presentation is much an overview presentation, and I wanted to highlight you know, we saw some amazing presentations from colleagues around the world who were all linking their work on all the different uh, SDG aims. And my presentation is going to focus on the science and education aspect of uh, why openness is important and why and how geo for all is contributing to uh, the uh, openness in science and education. So I work for the uh, Global Open Data for Agriculture and Nutrition. And uh, the work I am currently doing is focused on zero hungary and here again you know like when the more i work in this look into this and work on this area you know i find that open openness you know the whole open data open tools are all very very important for us to help achieve this and uh, you know with all these amazing technological developments you know it's a sad fact that even today you know over 800 million people around the world are hungry and you know uh, uh, suffering from malnutrition so you know this is something which uh, as a global community you know we have to come together to uh, in a, uh, as an urgent uh, need to help solve this problem and again you know innovation is very important to help us from uh, reducing the food waste to looking into uh, different uh, innovative ways to help us uh, make sure you know this uh, we are able to solve the zero hunger aim so I find that this, uh, you know, the open, uh, uh, open data, not only open data, but, uh, you know, the open tools and uh, the wider SDG aims are all key to help us achieve this. And I want to just show one uh, quick example, uh, two quick uh, reminder as well, you know, it's not only, you know, uh, you know, we have 800 million people who are suffering from zero hunger, uh, but also, you know, the most of the uh, poorest people in the planet are dependent on agriculture for the livelihood as well. So, uh, you know, so that's why it's very important to, uh, you know, for, for me, when I look into this, uh, you know, the zero hunger, uh, the SDG two, you know, we had to look into the two aspects, you know, how we can increase the livelihoods of the, uh, of the farming communities around the world, because they are the most poorest people in the planet. And if, they, if their livelihoods increase, you know, then it it links with all the other SDGs as well. So when uh, when they have more income, you know, hopefully the children will go to school and you know better healthcare and everything. So for me, that's why when I think about it, SDG two and SDG four are so linked and so interconnected as well. And I want to again highlight, you know, because the geo for all we have been working on the because the reason why we uh, were very we focus on open principles is on uh, because of the digital divide, which we find very uh, important to uh, bridge and the work that our colleagues around the world have been doing is to help us bridge this digital divide and this one uh, example I sh uh, saw some time back you know helped me uh, to understand to help me more learn and understand why it's so important because you know if you, uh, we have over seven billion people in this planet and even the small circle you see on the screen you know that has more than half of the world's total population. So more than 3.5 billion people are living in that small circle. And, you know, and when I look, uh, look into this SDG aims, you know, most of the uh, development needs, uh, you know, are more Im uh, impactful in those areas because, you know, you have uh, the most poorest people living in those areas, but still, you know, we are lacking from in education, uh, you know, we have, with the uh, uh, educational access, you know, and again, digital technologies are providing a big opportunity for help us to bridge the digital divide, but there are so many uh, barriers, artificial barriers, you know, if high cost of software, you know, so these are the things that we need to lower to ensure that colleagues from the developing world are also able to uh, get equal access to education and equal access to digital economy opportunities as well. So this is what you for all hopes to do as our contributions to the SDG aims. And I want to uh, give you one example. And there are so many examples, Sergio and other colleagues around the world have been showing so many examples. And I get so much uh, inspired when I read about all these examples from our colleagues uh, who are doing around the world. But this example is from my uh, state where I come from, from the south part of India called Kerala. And th this is again a very good example of 
you know, of how open principles helps uh, expand opportunities of quality education for a, a huge number of students around the uh, across the state, which will not have been possible. And this initiative uh, is, is called IT at School started over 10 years back, but now it covers over 12,000 schools, benefiting over 6 million students and uh, reaching over 200,000 uh, teachers. So, and it all started uh, fully based on free and open uh, open uh, tools from uh, Linux-based uh, uh, operating systems to uh, everything free and open and open data and open education resources. And this shows how, and uh, again, going back to Sergio's example of how uh, in Uruguay, they were able to scale up uh, the education opportunities, digital education opportunities to students across the country. And again, this is shows you know, we will never have been able to scale up to you know, 12,000 schools or 6 million students if you were dependent on any proprietary tools because the cost and the difficulties to pay these proprietary vendors will make sure you know, we will not be able to scale up. But this shows that the power of uh, open principles in education. You know, so with very little resources, we will be able to scale up educational opportunities to millions and millions of students across the world who currently do not have access to education. For me, education is a fundamental human right. You know, and uh, right now with digital technologies, we, uh, we uh, have the opportunities to reach this uh, edu quality education to students across the world. So let us not put artificial barriers in software costs, as et cetera, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, in that way. So we have to make sure, you know, all students across the world, you know, rich or poor, they should have access to quality education opportunities. And this is one small example I wanted to highlight and show you, you know, in practical levels, you know, what, what can be done. And our Jewish for all colleagues, you know, uh, again, coming back to the open principles, you know, we are not only looking at uh, open source soft, free and open source software, again, free and open source software is very important, but it, uh, our work is fitting into a lot of different open principles, you know, because it brings together open data, open education, you know, so open education resources, uh, then open standards, uh, access to uh, uh, open access research publications, and all these coming together helps makes this possible. And this example is provided by, uh, this was provided by uh, our colleagues uh, uh, from uh, Brazil, Silvana, uh, you know, showing some of the examples of, of geoforo labs around the world, you know, how they have been using uh, you know, from school education to uh, empowerment through mapping uh, from from slum inequality mappings in slums to the example that uh, 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 from Uruguay that Sergio shared. So the idea is having open principles helps us achieve all these SDG aims uh, in a much bigger way than if we were uh, not looking into having closed solutions, for example. And for geo for all science is also very important. And you know we have a lot of our colleagues. You know we have the are mostly based in universities around the world, and they do high impact research in geospatial science. And you know uh, when I was looking at one of the good examples we could think about uh, for us to uh, reach uh, to look for the future. You know this one of the uh, publications from the European Commission on open innovation, open science, and open to the world. You know it really encapsulates what we want to do, you know, we want to make sure, you know, we, we, we are open to the world, you know, and we want to build open science for open innovation opportunities for all. And we really truly believe that, uh, you know, digital economy opportunities should be available to everyone so that, you know, that will help create more uh, employment opportunities for students and for the current, not only for the current students, but also for our future generations. So why, you know, uh, you know, again, you know, when we look back, you know, if you look at the societal challenges, we find that you know, you know ge the geospatial tools are very important, from climate change uh, problems to, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, basic uh, human needs from, uh, for bettering the quality of life. You know, mapping is very critical component to help us understand and develop solutions. And these geo tools helps us plays a key role in finding solutions to global societal challenges. But uh, some of the tools traditionally had been very expensive and proprietary. So that means 
that you know, 95 percent of the world population you know they were not able to buy and uh, get access to these tools so with uh, thanks to the volunteers of the open source geospatial foundation in the last 10 years huge changes have been made you know so now if you go to osgu and geo for all you know you are able to get access to all these tools and help them to for town planners to government organizations to educators uh, across the world now they are able to make use of these geo tools uh, uh, freely available and uh, apply to various uh, various uh, domains they are working in and which fits in with all the for me why openness is important in science and education you know as uh, our colleagues have been demonstrating you know it is every 70 on each and every uh, sustainable development goal if you look into it it all links back to you know how we can use uh, you know the, the open principles are really relevant to each and uh, every one of them so uh, we hope the, you know what i what we really hope is you know today's uh, mini conference is just a start, but we want to highlight uh, the excellent work of our colleagues around the world in each of these SDGs and help help uh, share ideas of how we together we can help build up our impact for the SDG aims for the future as well. And uh, you know, for us, it's all, not only education but empowerment is also very important. So that's why uh, you know the access to digital economy is very important. So that means that there are more startups created, more entrepreneurship opportunities are created for students. So they can start their own companies. You know, they can start their own uh, organizations to uh, give more jobs to to, to uh, in digital economy. So that's why you know we we look into both education and empowerment as key fundamental uh, aspects of Geo for All. And so many people ask us, you know, who, you know, who are we? And you know, when you look at the, our memberships, it's very varied, from government organizations to academia to industry to startups to NGOs to teachers to students. You know, so we are from a very, very broad, broad background of colleagues from around, and also very wide disciplinary background. You know, so even within the geo for all labs, you know, some of the labs might be in agriculture science, some might be in computer science. You know, some might be in, uh, you know, different. You know, even uh, now we have. Uh, Colleagues working in so many different areas, you know, new areas, uh, you know, from environmental conservation, you know. So all these colleagues are from so wide, uh, widely dispersed uh, disciplinary areas, but they all come together because they, you know, the uh, the geo brings together all of them who are working in this uh, to jointly uh, collaborate and work together. But the main reason I think, you know, all the one of the underlying reason is all of us believe it's a social responsibility as well. You know, we want to because we believe that, you know, the example from Uruguay that Sergio uh, mentioned is a great, fantastic example because we want to make sure the resources, including software are, and data are made openly available. So knowledge is shared and then that will help colleagues who don't have opportunities, don't have the uh, money power, you know, they are also able to learn uh, without, you know, so uh, education is, uh, we want to make sure the barriers to education is lowered. So every student anywhere in the world, they are able to also learn and benefit from uh, geospatial science. And, you know, we are, uh, you know, it's for us, it's about empowering the future generation. So, you know, we do, our colleagues do a lot of, you know, not only school education that, that it was shown, but, you know, from PhD students level, you know, so there's so many examples of, you know, summer schools for students, uh, for PhD level students. And we, what we want to do is we want to train the next generation of, uh, of educators who can then go and build ideas for uh, open geospatial science uh, in their uh, departments in the future as well. And uh, coming back, I want to also, the, the fundamental, you know, this was an uh, image that was uh, shared by the Victoria, uh, Victoria. And this shows, you know, even today, you know, millions of our colleagues around the world from, you know, of our, you know, from India, I remember, you know, anywhere you go, in any city you go, you find, you know, millions of families living in slums. And, you know, for me, the question is, you know, why can't the children in these slums get also the opportunities to come up? And I think, you know, we, it's a moral responsibility for all of us to make sure education opportunities are available for everyone. So they all get the opportunities, you know, so future scientists and future engineers are all, you know, from the, you know, when we look at all, uh, you know, we need to make sure they also have that opportunities to come up in life. So we hope 
Uh, that's why open principles in science and education is very important. And there are so many examples in our geo community, you know, of joining, uh, you know, bringing together people from all different countries and languages and everyone coming together. And, you know, great examples of our colleagues working in the UN Open GIS, you know, so it's, the idea is, you know, how we bring together colleagues to work on the SDG aims. Uh, and I want to uh, finish off by showing some examples specifically in the agriculture domain because that's the domain I am now working on. And we work locally in developing countries. And what we are now doing is making sure our colleagues in developing countries have the uh, tools like the geo node that was uh, shown before by Cameron. Uh, you know, so there are so many amazing tools. And uh, for those of you who are new to GIS, you know, there is the OSGO Live uh, uh, USB facility. So, you know, you can, uh, if, uh, you, the, the idea is, you know, colleagues from developing countries where there is low internet bandwidth, you know, they are able to uh, use OSGO uh, Live for their education and training program. So we have been doing that, uh, you know, trying to make sure we, we have more universities in the developing world also starting GIS courses. And geo for all as I mentioned before, you know, if we are not only focusing on the free and open source software, but we are looking into all these dimensions on open access to research publication, open educational resources, open data, open standards. And there are so many examples of amazing resources, as, uh, teaching materials as well, uh, that is being produced by our colleagues. So, for example, you know, if you are starting a new program in GIS, you know, there are a lot of uh, materials also being produced that you can make use of, all in Creative Commons license. So, there is, you know, you can reuse them. To, to your needs as well. So I just want to finish off by showing some examples of how colleagues, you know, uh, how we are, uh, you know, making sure we bridge the digital divide. This is some examples of colleagues in, uh, from Tanzania, here for our colleagues, you know, working on uh, making uh, examples on geoeducation. Uh, and the idea is we want to make sure we want to empower colleagues from all economic backgrounds to have the opportunities to learn uh, learn science, STEM education. So the idea is, you know, we want to uh, this, uh, make sure STEM education opportunities are available to more students uh, from poorer economic backgrounds also. Uh, uh, Victoria and colleagues in Pretoria, you know, uh, have been doing a lot of work in uh, school education. And this, this was, this is again, some of the inspiring works that they, you know, our colleagues are doing to ensure that the next generation of students get an idea of the opportunities that are available in the geo, uh, the, the geospatial world. So they, you know, they were able, to, they are able to join courses in GIS when they uh, finish their schools and goes to universities and then be part of the uh, geospatial community in the future as well. And we all work together to ensure that, you know, the examples from uh, Uruguay is a, a great reminder for us, you know, that we, we should and expand these ideas, not only in Uruguay, but across the world in countries where there is currently, uh, there is less opportunities for students from economically poor backgrounds to get STEM education. So, you know, we need to learn from uh, the successful examples and how we build it up for the future. And for me, you know, this uh, you know, this comes to how we, uh, as as it was mentioned before, you know, how it links to all the SDG aims. You know, all the 17 SDG aims. You know, we we are contributing, and we want to make sure we contribute more. And I am so grateful to our colleagues from around the world who are working and contributing to all these SDG aims. And you know, we want to make sure we have we build upon this for the future as well. So I want to finished by thanking all our colleagues in geo for all because all the work I've shown you is actually the work that has been done by our colleagues. You know, I, I'm, I just, uh, you know, brought together this uh, to share with you, but I want to make sure that there are so many of your colleagues working across the world who made this possible. And I want to thank them all for, for their contributions to geo for all and helping us to, you know, to move forward on open education principles. So that's my, uh, 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 so I would like to thank everyone for listening and uh, I, I want to uh, now open the floor for questions. So if you have any questions, uh, so now is discussions time. So you can, you know, you can ask your questions. Thank you. You can, you can unmute your computers if you want to do the question uh, through the microphone or you can type it in the chat icon. Again, if you roll the mouse to the bottom of the screen, then you will see the, uh, the chat icon and also the icon to unmute your microphone. So any questions, you know, feel free to ask. 
or you can send by chat window if you want. Let me see. Uh, I have a quick question. Oh, hello. Go go ahead, Rafael. Uh, the um, what what do you see? I mean, again, first, uh, thank you to you and Charlie for your leadership and motivation. You have been key uh, members of the community. I uh, I personally really appreciate that, and I think all of us do. So the, my question is. Uh, what do you see uh, as the key factors or work that uh, we need to do as a community to move forward? There are so many fronts and so many needs. Of, have you identified one of the, or a few of the key things that we should all strive for? Yeah, great question, Rafael. And I think, you know, as, as, you know, we are learning as we move forward. And I think one of the things I personally learned, uh, you know, when I uh, look at all the, even today's presentation is, you know, initially we were fully focusing on universities, as you might all remember, we started because we were all working in universities and higher education was our main focus. And it is, it is really, even today, it's our main focus. But I think one, one thing we should also try now is to, how we can enable, for example, when I l listen to Sergio's work in uh, Uruguay and other colleagues in other, the developing world, you know, how we can, uh, you know, more contribute to teacher training programs, you know, because, uh, you know, that will be a big uh, enabler for us to reach out to, you know, millions of students uh, directly. So we need to somehow make sure, you know, take some steps to, uh, help us reach that aim and I welcome suggestions and ideas from everyone. Great, thank you. I think there's uh, there's one also in the chat. If you open the chat, there is a question there. Okay, uh, uh, hello, uh, this is from, uh, okay, I will read that question. It's from Stephen, who is asking how best can we have the localized geo open data innovations to be used by smallholder farmers? especially in East Africa. Okay, that's a really good question. And uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, so th this one is a, a very important question. And you know, uh, some of the work that uh, currently going on uh, in Godan, uh, you know, is directly trying to help th with this, uh, trying to answer this question because smallholder farmers, as I mentioned before, you know, they, you know, they are the, uh, in terms of, impact you know that's where we, we believe the biggest impact can be made and again you know it's a uh, it's there's a big digital divide happening there as well because we find that you know many of these smallholder farmers you know we have to uh, you know they don't have access to uh, technological innovations you know so but what i find is you know there is a big scope for the future in the sense that you know now if you think about it mobile phones are uh, you know, are, are becoming uh, very, very widespread. And even though not ideal uh, uh, internet bandwidth is there, but still, you know, I'm hopeful in the next three to four years time, you know, the internet uh, 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 bandwidth is going to increase. So, you know, what I really hope is, uh, you know, we, are, we really hope that digital innovation is going to reach the grassroots through phones. And, you know, that's where we hope you know, for, from, uh, you know, from local weather information to, uh, you know, all these uh, localized information can be made available, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the farmer level, uh, uh, farmer level in the developing world. But, you know, again, there are so many uh, uh, kind of difficulties as well currently, you know, in terms of act getting, you know, mostly economic access for these uh, farming communities. So I am hopeful. And you know it's a long road ahead, and we have a lot of colleagues working in this area. So next question. Uh, okay. So thanks, uh, Stephen, for your question, and I will be more than happy to uh, you know send you some examples of some good uh, practical examples of what is the happening in the developing world, especially in East Africa, to you as well later. Oh, Franz Joseph. Hello, Franz Joseph is asking. Do you think that geospatial IT is specifically important compared to other fields of ICT? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's France, that's, that's a really important question. You know, the reason why I think, you know, location is very important for, when I look at, you know, all the uh, SDG aims, you know, even when, when we look at this SDG aims, 
one of the unifying factors for all of them is the location. And, and that is where I see geo is important, you know. So that's why the uh, big focus for us and why I think, you know, the whole work that we are doing in uh, geo for all is so important is because, you know, anything from, you know, from uh, food security to, uh, you know, to transportation, everything, you know, it has a location component. And so even though the wider ICT is very important, you know, it gives the background of the technologies that make this possible. Uh, the geo is also very unique. That helps us bring together and, uh, you know, to find solutions to global societal challenges. You know, that's where I think uh, geo is so important. And that's why I am very passionate that, you know, we need to make sure the geo education opportunities are made available from high school level itself. So students, you know, when they are learning about climate change to deforestation to, you know, all of uh, the uh, issue, the kind of uh, real uh, world problems, you know, they will have, they will be able to get access to the uh, the geo, uh, the, like, special literacy, but it's all the geo thinking in the curriculums to help them uh, develop for the future. Franz Joseph, uh, did I answer that? Uh, is there anything else you want me to answer on that? Okay, great. Thank you. So Ibrahima is asking, what is the first step to do as a newcomer in this project? Uh, so welcome, Ibrahima. I think, you know, first I will suggest, please go through a website, uh, you know, and then you'll be able to find all the information on, uh, you know, on OSGO, GGO for all. And, you know, if you, uh, you know, you, you, all the, you know, how to join, how to, the you know, where to find, if you're an educator, you know, if you are, if you are uh, teaching your students, in uh, GIS, you know, all the information is very clearly available in the uh, in the website. And also, I will also uh, invite everyone to think about how you can contribute to the UN SDGs. You know, so depending on different areas, as I told before, you know, colleagues are from so much different disciplinary areas. So somebody, some might be from the you know the food science background some some colleagues might be from computer science background some might be from the engineering background arts background but always i will suggest you know uh, think about how you can use these geo tools to contribute to one of the societal goals in the stgs and that will help you you know find the right uh, ideas and projects for your work as well thank you uh, Stephen is again asking, how can a research institu institution join this project? Something uh, like this lacks in our department at Makerere University, Uganda. No geo databases for students, research students and innovators to work with. Data is not centralized. How do you advise on that? Thank you, Stephen. A very valid question. In fact, it is, uh, you are not alone. In fact, many of the universities in the developing world are in the same situation. But I will, uh, I, I will suggest that this is changing rapidly. Uh, thanks to the colleagues in the Open Source Geospatial Foundation volunteers that make all these uh, resources available. So now, you know, for example, at your university, Makara University, you know, please uh, feel free to join, uh, you know, uh, Geo for All. You know, you can just complete the form uh, uh, with your details. And uh, uh, Victoria is the, our Geo for All chair. She'll be more than happy to. Uh, info, you know, to, uh, if you have any specific questions, you know, once you submit the form, she'll come back to you to for any questions. But more importantly, go to the GeoForward website and uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, download, you know, all the uh, teaching resources as well as the software resources. For example, our colleagues in USA at the, uh, 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 I forgot the lab name. Uh, do you remember Rafael or you know, the, the, there was five modules that were created by, uh, gosh, uh, so the, there's some excellent examples of, uh, it, it is from the, uh, which university is not Texas State University. The, there was, there's a really good example of, let me, uh, what I will do is I will share my screen uh, now. To, North Carolina. Not North Carolina, you know, there, there was this uh, national science, uh, there was a, Funding that was it. Um, uh, they developed these five modules uh, on QGIS from introduction to GIS to, and they ran a MOOC program as well. But now they made available everything in uh, GitHub and uh, you know on their Geo Academy. It's, it's Geo Academy, okay? So there's 
So she it's now on the special query lab. I share the link. Oh, well. special query. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Victoria. So special query lab. Uh, so there is special query lab colleagues who develop that uh, five module. So for example, you know, from your university in Uganda, you know, you don't need to restart the, the you know, you can basically start a new course in GIS uh, by looking into, you know, the book, uh, the uh, learning materials that is already produced by uh, the, uh, the spatial, uh, what, what is the lab? Spatial lab. Is that? Yeah, spatial query lab. Uh, so the link is, uh, if you look at the chat window, you know, the uh, Victoria has sent that, uh, the link of that chat window. So uh, for Stephen, I would suggest, please uh, go to uh, our website. Please register your university as a Geo, uh, to Geo for All. And then if you have any queries, you can also use our mailing list. So please, you know, if you want to find any information, you don't have that information, send an email query to Geo for All mail list. And we have colleagues who will answer your query. And then uh, don't feel you are alone. You know, they, we have colleagues around the world who will be there to help you. So, you know, you please go ahead and start uh, GIS courses in your university in Uganda. And we will be uh, able to help you as you progress. I hope that answered your question. So we have another question from Ostama when who is asking most open access journals require researchers or their funders to pay heavily for it. How can we address the issues? Are these journals that publish for free? Oh, that is again a very important question. And I think this is something we need to work as a community as well. And there are now a lot of repositories, uh, university-wide repositories that help us make uh, you know this possible. But there are uh, open access journals that do provide uh, 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 how to, uh, uh, which is the, but what I would suggest is please send an email to the list and I'm sure we'll be able to find some examples that we can share with colleagues, uh, you know, on Victoria or anyone, do you know in GIS any specific open access journals which are freely, uh, which don't have to pay for uh, publishing? Are any of you aware of it? So if, if so, please share that with, uh, with Osadam, when I will, I will look into it, and then I can get back to you as well. But I know, for example, some of the journals, some of the journals like TGIS and others, uh, some I can't remember some journals. You know, they, for developing countries, they provide uh, some waivers and things like that. But I need to look into this. Anyone else, uh, Rafael or Victoria, do you have any uh, any uh, ideas on that? No, no, I think that's, uh, I think you covered it well. Okay, great. Okay. But please, uh, but I think that this is one big area, I think, for geo for all is very important. We, we hope that, but one of the good news is, for example, funders like uh, European Commission are uh, pushing for more open access journals. And what I hope it will happen in the near future will be not, uh, not the traditional uh, journal publishers, but more universities will start their own repositories for helping us publish high quality journals, uh, you know, without having to pay through this, but this is not my area of interest, of expertise. So I will look into some colleagues who have more expertise in this and come back to you. Any other questions from any colleagues? Uh, okay, so I want to thank everyone who, to, who joined our uh, uh, teleconference today. Uh, and I also want to thank, okay, so Victoria has just, uh, it, Inform that International Journal of Spatial Data Infrastructures Research is an open access journal it's, and it's free. Okay, yes, in fact, I know I remember this one because uh, some of our geo for our colleagues are in the board of this journal. So, you know, maybe that's something we can help. Uh, so, uh, whoever who asked the question, you know, we can come back to you. So, you know, we can uh, uh, we can work on this. Okay, so Franz Joseph also mentioned that geo IT might be closer related to sustainability and development compared to other fields of IT who are more directed towards business. Yes, that is a very good point, Franz Joseph. Yep, thank you. So, uh, you know, so, so thank you everyone for joining today. You know, all the participants, all the speakers and presenters, and uh, everyone who uh, contributed for today. I want to specifically thank Rafael and uh, for hosting this webinar series for us and uh, the pl webinar platform we are using. Charlie for uh, bringing us all together for the for the for this uh, uh, World Commons Week. I think uh, it's very important. Uh, I, I'm very happy that we were able to contribute 
in our small way to the to the work that is being done by the wider commerce community uh, you know so i think this is really good that we were able to uh, build, build this mini conference uh, during this world commerce week 2019 and i hope that we will be able to use this as a starting point in the future to uh, arrange uh, webinars uh, like this uh, you know it's like mini conferences of, of five to six geo for all labs coming together and sharing their work on specific uh, on which uh, UN SDG aims they are working on so other colleagues from around the world get more ideas on and they can also expand their learning and uh, learn more and share ideas as well so I want to thank every one of you for joining today and we'll hope to see you all in the future for uh, for one of our uh, geo for all webinars and I will invite you to join our geo for all community as well thank you all Thank you all. Now we'll stop the recording. Thank you. Thank you.